I'd like to start out by saying that uh, I'm not going to be speaking today as a pastor of a church. I'm going to be speaking as a taxpayer, and I'm going to be speaking directly to the taxpayers uh, of this community. Mrs. Harris is her name, and her son's name was Bobby Phipps, who died of an overdose uh, about three years ago. Uh, that was after the election had taken place. Uh, she was so distraught then that she contacted Senator Saling's office and wanted to meet with him. Uh, the meeting was agreed upon, a date and time at the church, and uh, Senator Salings did not show up. She was just trying to find where she could send other people to get proper treatment. And uh, various times we tried to contact him and ask why he did not show up, and there was no response. And at the time, I think Mr. Crockett was the, the chief administrator for uh, uh, Mr. Senator Saling. And uh, he, he's uh, made the promise and even was on the phone with him uh, in, in front of her and others. Uh, she has kept a journal of everybody that uh, she had contacted and, and called, and Senator Saling was one. And for whatever reason, he absolutely, positively has never gotten back with her after multiple phone calls and emails that were sent out. He simply did not care and left her just in her bereaved condition uh, several years ago. She has not moved that much farther uh, since her son's death. And it's, it's bad enough when you're made a promise by friends, but when a politician makes a promise to be somewhere to give this lady a ray of hope, and he doesn't show up, doesn't call, doesn't send an email, doesn't do anything, that is more harm than good for her. Well, one of the things is you have a prayer garden now here um, from, from her family and um, uh, her close loved ones that, that wanted to do something uh, for the community. And she's uh, trying to become an advocate, but unfortunately in her grief stricken state, she, she's just not able to do that. and. Um, to reach out to a political figure about such a serious issue like this and just to totally be ignored is um, just uh, unbelievable. So, um, but the, the problem is even bigger than that because uh, she was having direct contact uh, with Senator Sailing's office, but, but with all the political figures that have been elected into office, how have they been reacting to um, your um, requests and also other people's requests to address this issue? Well, I'd like to start out by saying that uh, I'm not going to be speaking today as a pastor of a church. I'm going to be speaking as a taxpayer, and I'm going to be speaking directly to the taxpayers uh, of this community. Uh, I personally have tried to make contact with every one of our local politicians. Uh, as far as uh, Mr. Todd Crandall goes, uh, I have sent, I could not tell you how many emails. He has never responded to an email other than an automatic email, we'll get back to you. I met with Mr. Crandall along with Frank Lotman to talk to him about the, the community and the increase of crime that would, would start because parole and probation was dumping cases. Mr. Crandall's words to me in person with a witness said, I can't help you at all with case dumping or anything with the state unless it comes up with the budget. Other than that, I can't help you. Goodbye. That was the last I've actually heard from him, and he's been no help with any of the issues. And I've become an advocate for public safety, and he has just been a deaf ear to any of my requests. That is Mr. Crandall. As far as Mr. Long goes, Bob Long, Delegate Bob Long, I have uh, reached out to Bob Long and, and uh, he had indicated to me on Facebook or to others that he'd done so much for the church. I had asked him what he'd done, what, ha what has he done? And he got upset that I asked that question and before you know it, the first thing that he did was call me on the phone and say to me that I should stick with my calling. At the time, my calling was a concern for the church property and the government center. He felt that I should not be involved in anything that dealt with the government center, but when the church property part of it was being taken from the state or the county, it became a problem to the church. 
So Mr. Long has uh, been asked to come to the church, to come to the meetings, and his uh, emails speak for themselves. If you want to see me, come to Annapolis. I'll make some time for you. Uh, I can meet you at Annapolis when, in fact, he passes probably by the church every day. He had no concerns about the increase of crime in the neighborhood. He had no concerns about the, what the, the church might lose if the government center was put up. He had no concerns about anything other than raising money for his election. And that's where it stands with Mr. Long. Now, with Robin Grammer, Robin has been very open, has uh, come to our church, spoke to the people, has been uh, uh, understanding and what we're trying to do to make the community a safer place. Uh, and I find him to be somebody that has a genuine concern for the community. Uh, with Ed Metzger, or Rick Metzger, excuse me, uh, Rick has come to our meeting he has spent some time with me. He has contacted some people in the state to try to resolve some issues that we had uh, and is, is available by phone or email whenever I contact him. Then if you go back to Johnny Sailing, the senator again, uh, he has no concern about anything that has to deal with the case dumping or false reports sent. Anything that involves community safety uh, or, or community, community issues or public safety, he hadn't responded to anything. So uh, I just want the taxpayers to know that I'm not speaking as a pastor of the Merritt Park Baptist Church. I'm speaking as a concerned citizen that sees the increase of crime when something could have very well been done by the local politicians by making sure these cases weren't dumped back in the community and it has fallen to deaf ears. Now, with Rick, how long have you been working to do some kind of resolution with him? I'm going to say I've been working with uh, Rick Metzger for, I'm going to say, close, since December of last year. And uh, he recently has shared with me that all of the people are on board with him. That would mean all the delegates and Senator John Salins. But I have not heard anything from them. They will not answer emails, except for, for uh, Mr. Grammer, he does. But uh, other, the other ones, there's not a whole lot of response. Mr. Long's wife uh, has called and, and spoke about uh, his relationship with me and why I was doing what I was doing uh, when, when he had supposed to been out raising money for uh, kids, for toys, for food. And I said to her, he wasn't elected to raise money for kids or toys for kids, that he was a politician and he should be concerned about all of the things going on in our community and he simply didn't like me being outspoken but that's how it is with my relationship with them well i, I would like to thank um the the, the church um, for all the work that they have done and yourself for for everything you have been doing for over 40 years to bring free drug and alcohol education and, and this this is just a much bigger problem um, we're talking about life and death we're talking about the crime we're talking about the community how it uh, affects everyone so um, this is such a huge problem that uh, for for our uh, elected officials many of them to uh, neglect this um, uh, their duties to to resolve this issue um, is is uh, just unbelievable. So um, I would like to thank you, Pastor, once again for all the work that you have done and for sitting down and doing this uh, video. And our heart breaks uh, for, for the family members uh, like Miss Harris that, that are just having such a problem dealing uh, with, with the loss of their uh, loved ones. And that's, that's why we're doing the crosses too, because it's pretty amazing. Uh, every time I go back to pick up the crosses, we leave them in a, a new area, three, three days, seven days, and there's new names on the crosses. And it's just making such a huge impact. And um, people are so happy to know that someone cares about their loved one. And that's, that's the, it just touches my heart to know that, that just this small thing that we're doing um, is making such a huge impact. And uh, you know, I, I'm totally devastated um, that, that, our, that our elected officials won't do what they were elected to do. I, I have one, one last comment if I, if I can, Scott. I'm not speaking about these men being bad people. I voted for each and every one of them. What I'm speaking of it has nothing to do with their church membership or our church or anything else. They're Christian men and, and I don't question that. What I'm questioning is public safety issues in this community 
that they did nothing about. And for Senator Salings, it is very difficult for a individual mother to try to move on with her life when she was turned away by somebody that made a promise to her. So with that being said, I only hope that the taxpayers of this community think when it comes time to voting this year. Well, I would have to say, in my personal opinion, that anyone that says that they are a Christian and turns their back on people the way that these elected officials are, that they are fake Christians and that they are not even good elected officials and they're not even good human beings to care about their fellow man. So I have a real problem with that. And you said you voted for them. Do you consider voting for them again? Absolutely not. 